All right, I'm ready whenever you are. Are we live? Yeah, I can do a countdown if you want. Do you need to? Like, you're already recording? I'm recording, yeah. You can just rip into it if you want. I can edit the... Keep it, keep it in. Okay, ready? Okay, okay, yeah. All right, welcome back to the Average Andy's Podcast. I'm Alex, joined by my beautiful co-host, John. Thank you. And it's been, been about a month now, which is timely, because I think that is the total amount of time it took us to kill the eighth boss of the raid, right? There's nine this raid. Am I yes. right? Yes, yep, nine. Yes, so we just... We just killed Tindril, Sage Swift, and we figured this is the best time to do a continuation of the podcast because there's a lot to unpack there, starting with even like making a comp for the fight, um, down to the impacts it has on you as a guild that are like us. So just just to start off, Rip, like obviously this boss was m just stupidly harder than anything else leading up to the point, and that causes... I don't know, there's just a lot of people feel differently about whether or not there should be bosses in a raid that take like 400 plus pulls. And I didn't even really, what was our total pull count on Tindril? Uh, Warcraft log says 367 total. Oh, that's, that does it? That's actually less than I thought it was, but. Yeah, I, I don't know. There, yeah. there was some things going on, like my ERT only said 320 and then someone else has said higher. So I don't really know, but I'll just say 367 because that's what Warcraft log says. Okay, sure. So. Basically, we can start from the beginning and go on. Syndral is honestly not like the biggest. It wasn't really like a big weak aura boss, right? Or would um, you think? Would you consider so, it to be like a big weak aura boss? For like, for like eighty percent of the raid, no. But like the healers, it was a weak aura boss, and like yeah, this is like a very niche thing. But paladins, it was kind of like weak aura ish. Like you needed to freedom and uh, sack like number three and number four a lot, and you needed to like. You know, you need to have the liquid weak core set up. It's not. It wasn't like a smolder on or like a fire act level like weak core thing where you need to hit a macro. But um, now for a lot of the raid, it didn't really matter. But for those for those for those that needed weak core, it it did kind of matter. But it wasn't that bad, I guess. Yeah, and so we can we'll go with the good and the bad. And I'll start with what I thought was cool about Tindril. I just think overall it was a fun fight. Um, the lag issues suck. Luckily, I didn't really ever have any that were. Yeah. So bad it was breaking my game. There were some times when that second set of roots that you cleared, sometimes I would, like my frame drops would be very extreme. And yeah. I made it really hard to like tell where the beams were coming from and stuff. Um, but overall, I think Tindril, a fun fight. There's it's like constant action. The dragon writing actually was a good touch, especially like the implementation of it in the actual boss phases, not just like flying to the platforms is kind of underwhelming. Same thing as heroic, it's just harder. Yeah. But the the whole thing where like the melee have to go up, grab a feather, and then come down and like you slam. That that that's like a cool touch. I think it was a good way to implement dragon riding mm -hmm. into a fight. Um, and I enjoyed that. Uh, and I actually thought phase three was kind of underwhelming. And I think that's maybe just because it was so much easier by the time we were getting to phase three with the nerfs and how much extra time you had for seeds and how much less they were. Yeah. But I I think like phase one probably the hardest to consistently get down. Phase two is just a lot of damage, just like a, a big jump up in how much the healers have to do, and then phase three was just kind of like, yeah. Phase three, honestly, is just phase. I guess one with seeds didn't really feel that like crazy or difficult. Yeah. Um. Before the nurse phase, I don't know. I, I guess phase one is the easiest now. Would you say? After the yeah, nurse, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I was like, I think phase two was before the nurse, like the mechanically most easiest thing, even though there were seeds. Um. But. Yeah, like you said, it's pretty much just like a like an HPS check on phase two. The mechanics there aren't like super tough. There's not that many like one shot kind of things like there are in phase one and three. Um, but yeah, I mean phase three, I guess, I guess was underwhelming after the nerfs. But honestly, I don't I'm not really mad about it. I like we did what like fifteen phase three pulls before we killed it, if that. Like maybe yeah. even ten with everyone alive, we did phase three. Might be even less than that. Um, but like I, I'm kind of glad because <laughs> I didn't really want to do like another hundred pulls of phase three prog because even getting there with everyone alive is like so difficult. Yeah, and we went from like sixteen point six percent to just dead when we finally got a good pull in phase three. So the nerves definitely did help a ton. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess the bad is something we don't have to just like. I won't just talk through it randomly. Starting with. The comp requirement for Tindril obviously be. Uh oh. 
probably isn't. Hello? What? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you're just kind of cutting out there. You said something about comp requirement. I can just edit it. Oh, I, yeah, I hit yeah, I hit my mic cord thingy. It's but good. like starting with the bad for or at least for, you know, when you're a guild that doesn't have a ton of options available and isn't like perfectly playing the meta by any means. Um, for starters, you need eight melee, which I don't know, probably isn't that difficult for most people to get because it is a melee tier. I feel like a lot of people are just playing melee because like Rogue's so good, Shaman's great, Enhancement Shaman's great, Warriors are good. And then obviously Demon Hunter is very, very good. But outside of just like, oh, you need eight melee, the from the comp perspective, it's one of those fights where like ev no matter what, everyone wants to try to do like the highest overall, regardless of what you tell them. And so <laughs> you run into things where it's like, okay, we're too much on the like the ads that spawn or the roots. We're just doing too much to that. And you need like a pretty specific comp. I feel like especially pre-nerf to beat the check in phase three where you just eventually just get overwhelmed by mechanics. We we probably wouldn't have been able to do it prior to the nerfs yeah i mean <laughs> the pull we killed it like we killed it like two mechanics after we were supposed to kill it like you're supposed mm -hmm. to kill it on the the one set of feathers like you're not supposed to pick up the feathers you're supposed to kill it but we did like that and then we did like another set of seeds and and then there was like a last set of dispels that we got so um yeah we definitely ran into issues where people just probably were trying to pad on the roots too much which i mean at the beginning of the it, it's like hard because you're stuck in phase one for like 200 pulls i feel and you get used to like that and when you're progging like phase two and you still need like root damage and then they make these like sweeping changes to where you only have to send three people up now and the roots just kind of like fall over because you have like an extra person down each time and the dragons are like doing more damage to the roots now so you don't really need as much root damage anymore but it's like hard to like get people to like i tried it i tried going single target and like i was like playing like shit because i was i was used to like 250 plus pulls of just the yeah. same thing playing an aoe build and like my cooldown timings were all different and stuff and it just like kind of messed me up so i mean if the nerfs were in from the beginning yeah i think probably we we could have done that from the start where we like say okay these people play more single target and honestly probably if we were like a better guild too we would we would like delve deeper into that but i mean from where we are after the nerfs like the boss is going to die as long as everyone kind of stayed alive you know yep yeah de definitely and it was also it's not even just like people trying to pad and stuff i mean just like the way a lot of classes do damage like i know like warriors now typically they've been like very short cd cycle but now they have to play like a pretty static one and a half i think minute build so you're making a very clear decision like am i going to do any damage to the roots am i going to do all my damage to the boss and stuff there's just yeah. a lot of specs that are like that i mean like demon hunter has the luxury of you use like your you like meta the boss and then you just save your other aoe cooldowns for the root set that you're you're going on so is it but that that's what I mean. it's just like depending on which specs you have available like we only have one demon hunter we only have one bm hunter like there's all these classes that kind of just like carry the are, roots for and, you yeah, yeah super good at the fight but we don't have a lot of them um and like you know that the, they're just both good at like not trading off a ton to be able to do a, t a good root damage like I think Demon Hunter is statistically the worst at boss damage on the fight, but because they play that build. But like, even considering that they're you're playing like this really goofy root damage build, your single target is like really not that bad. But other specs, you're like Red Paladin, Red Paladin, yeah, luxury like, of like, yeah. like you, the, you're either just that. slamming the boss or slamming the ads, yeah, yeah. And I think the biggest thing about Tindril, though, especially for how it affects a guild like ours, is just how difficult it was, especially pre nerf, and you're just like kind of feels like you're slamming your head against the wall for a really long time because mm -hmm. there's so many white mechanics that any someone makes a mistake and the pull is instantly dead and that happens a ton in phase one it could be tanks miss a mushroom a it's like a feather player dies before especially when you yeah. had four it was like it's just really really bad when that happened you had a dispel going off earlier the person with the spell dying instant raid wipe there's just like so many mechanics where if anything went wrong, the pull's just dead. And I think for guilds of our stature, you know, anything above probably rank like 500, the way that affects people, I, like, I mean, you just clearly tell a lot of people in our raid team were kind of like over it quickly and just like waiting for nerf. And I think that's just the reality of bosses like this that really just become like wars of attrition like how how many times can you pull it as opposed to like having a steady progression cycle yeah um, i mean how did you feel about that in tindril i don't honestly i don't even know if we would ever be able to kill this false like pre-nerfs i mean maybe 
I, I think I think we have a better chance of killing this pre nerf than we did Mythic Calandra's pre nerf. I would say. Yeah. What do you for think? sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think after a while, the fight just like, you know, you can learn it, and it's like there is some mechanical skill to it, but um, not as much as like Calandra's. But I, uh, I mean, yeah, there are definitely guilds like past us that would never be able to kill us, kill this boss, like. And I'm not saying like we're like amazing or anything, but like there are guilds that would never kill it the way it was. And honestly, I think it'll probably get more nerfs. Uh, I th I do think the nerfs they made were really good to it. Um, but yeah, like mm -hmm. you were saying, it's like I I had the joke of like the tier list kind of in the middle of the fight of like the people that weren't important. And there's like literally like three people that aren't important in the fight. Like you were saying, a melee dies before nerfs. A melee dies, you're screwed pretty much. You have eight melee, one dies, and you don't have a beer as like. The feather's just gonna get messed up. Uh, like one of the healers dies. It's like a pain in the butt. One of the spells is off. A uh, range, a uh, range is kind of like the only safe one to 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 let die. But even then, you can't let your warlock die because they were like destroying the ads. You can't let your BM hunter die because they were destroying the ads. Uh, the mage was like the last resort for blinking into the seeds. Pretty much the only ones you could kind of let die were like the aug evokers and the shadow priests. And I mean, it's just like when you have a fight like that where okay the raid's not wiping if like say like on anduin for example one mechanic got messed up the whole raid just like explodes it wasn't kind of nope. like that but it also was at the same time like you walk into a fire beam the raid's not instantly exploding but pretty much like any death on the fights you know just gg and go again and um i don't know i don't really like fights like that like i like where you can kind of just like struggle along and keep getting deeper and deeper into the fight even if people are dying and just like oh okay like oh pay attention to this like we can we can see this even though like only like four people are alive or like 10 people are alive like let's just keep going whereas with this fight it's like you just aren't even gonna be able to do the mechanics at all and see further if like one person's dead i, I don't like that at all yeah and i'd be i don't know like like what the consensus of hall of fame guilds are but uh, so this is a boss that's clearly designed to be difficult for world first guilds yeah. in its initial incarnation like it 100 percent was designed to slow down the race and not make the raid tier get blown over but blizzard like it's it's a tough balance i don't hate bosses like this that are just really difficult i think it's actually kind of fun but i think the vast majority of the player base especially if you're going down to like guilds who just are trying to get cutting edge by the end of a tier like this just straight up kills them and i think i don't know how frequently it actually happened but we had like someone in our guild like our tank talking about like some guilds just stopped raiding until nerfs and stuff and i think blizzard probably could have been a lot quicker to nerf this boss like yeah literally yeah. within a week or two of world first being done i don't know how exactly some of the better like high-end guilds that are still you know competing for hall of fame or even like top 100 if if they would like that i don't know if they enjoy how difficult the fight was and they kind of like you know being able to do it. i know it does suck when well at least for a guild who's you know like actually trying to be competitive it probably does suck when something gets nerfed in the middle of your progression yeah. it's like i mean we've been there so before. much time working on it yeah but usually it's most of the times that like the big set of nerfs that make the fight more playable for your average guild like those happen either right as or after we get there because we're yeah. kind of like all right at that curve i feel but i mean I thought it was a cool fight and I like the idea, but in reality, I, it, it's just one of those things where you go from a raid tier that's so easy, even like mm, Smolderon. Yeah, Smolderon's easy as hell. Smolderon's like a this. pretty tuned, yeah, like a tuned boss where it feels good as like the seventh boss, like the right before you get to the end wings where you're supposed to fight the very difficult bosses, but like the jump up in difficulty is just insane. It's like very jarring when you're in a tier like this. Like in what was the last raid? Uh, Abaris, for example the difficulty stepped up like pretty quickly and it, it almost was kind of steady like forgotten experience was hard for the wrong reasons and stuff but fights were actually like difficult throughout the entire raid like Rashad yeah. was very like hard to they were like progressively like, harder but they were just like harder from the start like even yes. Zara was like way harder than like <laughs> i want to say like four bosses in this raid kind of so yeah um, and like smolderon's probably we killed like 125 but we had like a lot of bad wipes and stuff and weak aura issues with like the orbs and yeah the i mean we when we yeah it changed in the middle of our prog so but yeah even that fight like wasn't that bad and like yeah like you're saying like i like tendril as a fight i just it's it's much better as it is now it can be even better just take like the like don't make a fire beam one shot you make it take you to like 10 percent health if you're if you're you know at full health or something and like they cannot have fights where you have people just 
dropping to 10 frames at, at a part like uh, it's just kind of unacceptable to me i don't know people are running on like i was i'm running on a good computer and like the only reason that i'm living that part is because i have a bubble if i didn't mm-hmm. i would be dying as much as everyone else and uh, it's, i don't know i don't know how they don't learn that that stuff's just going to make people's computers drop to like 10 frames you have to like do all this extra well, stuff to make it work yeah and they know everyone's running you know has a as a spaceship HUD yeah. for their UI like every, they know that and the game was the engine's what like over 24 years old now probably yeah. it's like right up at that from whenever they first designed it it's just I the idea of the fight's fine but in reality and practice especially considering not everyone even if you have the best computer possible you are still going to draw very low frames yep. like I I don't have the best computer but yeah again like mine's like very good I have, I have good hardware I'm working with and I still dropped really low like I'm in sub 30 frames yeah Luckily, I wasn't like actually lagging. Like it wasn't input delay. Yeah, I didn't or anything, have input so delay. My so frames would just to... go to like yeah, like, like zero for it, like a second. There's nothing you can do about it, and that is something they should probably keep in mind. But I also just think, in general, when you have a boss like Tindril for the vast majority of Mythic Raiders, because you know Mythic Raiders already are like the top something percent. Like most people who play World of Warcraft do not even attempt to get into Mythic Raiding. Maybe they do like the first couple of bosses, but like it's already a very like. Yeah. it's not easily accessible at all and then you put a fight like this in and i think it's just it's just asking for people to get like they don't want to like, play pretty cynical about the whole tier yeah because yeah you're just slamming against this boss that feels impossible and it sucks to play because your frames are dropping all the time like it, all this stuff was just i definitely get how it impacts even like guilds like ours it just takes people out of it they're irritated by it or just feel like apathetic in general about the progression progress or cycle whatever and that that just sucks so overall good fight but yeah nerfs need to happen way quicker um it's just too inaccessible i feel like for so many guilds and i I don't even think a lot of people i can check real quick but i don't even think a lot of people have killed it still i mean there's there's definitely been i don't even think 200 had killed it before the nerfs and i think it were like 600 have killed it now so 547 now okay so it went from like maybe 180 or even less to so like at least 400 something guilds have killed it in two weeks which i think that's kind of good yeah that is but you, yeah. you compare it to like smolderon has 1542 kills yeah okay yeah and Tigel has like a whole thousand less than that and it kind of clear... it kind of gives me like um sepulcher vibes like i don't know how many guilds have this ban from this tier but i remember like sepulcher before they nerfed everything like every guild was just disbanding like you had like halandris and the anduin and to like Rigalon into jailer that were these guilds doing it before all the nerfs came out and it like killed a lot of guilds now i don't you know i don't know how many kills have died from tendril into fire act but i i know i know it's happened to guilds this tier already at that one guild um god with that imperative i know they disband i'm sure a lot of other top end guilds have disband i mean that one chinese guild that like a thousand pulls on this i'd probably go crazy if we had to do that yeah and it's i think the overall community reaction to sepulcher was i mean cool it's a cool raid it was a cool raid there's a lot of really cool bosses but it's just way too hard and it's, every time they attempt to tune for world first guilds it just has such a negative impact on the average mythic player base that doesn't want to be putting thousands of like you know, hundreds of yeah. pulls into a boss especially if it's not the last boss and then you go into fire act who is now more difficult than tendril after nerfs and it's just like and it's a super heavy weak aura boss which is how it should be but yeah it's harder for like some of the wrong reasons like you said the yeah weak auras. yeah and, and i think it's only harder now because it got nerfed yeah or because sure. tendril got so like nerfed so heavily yep and that it, it's just it's just something they i feel like they every time they've done it they just don't really learn from it and it sucks because the last two tiers i was gonna say that very good progression cycles yeah. and they've been very smooth and then you just jump into this one where it's like it does make sense from a difficulty curve that the last two bosses are so difficult but it's just like so jarring and it and it has a real impact i think when you go from a raid tier that's been your smooth sailing through everything like sub 40 pulls all bosses and then you just hit this just behemoth of a boss that is so difficult yeah it just it just feels bad and i think most people do not like that they do not like the difficulty curve going from like 10 percent to 99 percent boss to boss yeah and like uh yeah like you said the first six bosses or whatever is like sub 40 pulls and then smolder rounds like whatever at this point after the nerfs it's probably like a sub 100 boss pull maybe like 80 to 100 and then like tendril it's like still 300 boss pull kind of maybe 200 um 
but I, you know, it should, it should be like a hundred, hundred to 150. And then fire Axe should be like, you know, 200 to 250 or whatever, like a normal end boss. But yeah, it's like you go into tendril pre nerf and you tell your guys like, yeah, we're going to be here for like, you know, five, 600 pulls and nobody wants to do that at all. Yeah, it just it stinks. Like no yeah. one, no one wants to be doing that. And it's that funny and... because like our progression time on it is like less than Echo of Neltharian, and uh, it's just like I I don't know. Well, I don't know how you feel about it. Like, what's your comparison of the bosses? Like, which which of those two did you like better? Personally, I like Tendril like way better. Oh yeah. The lag was like really annoying, but God, man, a weak aura boss is just so much worse to me. Yeah, Echo sucked. That was a terrible fight. And it, it just, it was so, it was the irony of that fight was that it was the tier where they were like, we think weak artists are becoming like too intrusive into the rating experience and stuff. Like we want to get move away from them. So we're introducing private R's and you just make a boss that is the only boss in the whole raid tier where you wish you have like a good weak R that just tells you what to do. Yep. And you kind of need it or else the boss is just a complete mess. It's impossible. impossible. And it's just like, it's stupid to have to deal with that. It, it, and that that so that just took out i think everyone hated it for that reason but it, yeah i know tendril was still way more fun i think you didn't need weak art there's certain rules like you said there are some people who do need them and it's very helpful to have them but you're not literally being piloted and your pulls aren't yeah. being made or broke by some, whether or not people can like react to the janky workaround that you had to do because they wanted to limit the functionality of weak ours on the fight some people in our guild said they preferred Echo to this, but I honestly, that's got to just be like recency bias of hatred towards Syndrome, right? Like, there's well, yeah, there's and no way, like, way harder. Yeah, I, I guess <laughs> honestly, I feel like it was easier for us. I don't know. I mean, it was over double the pull count. Yeah, but the progression right, time was, we were longer on Echo. Yeah, and I think it's because it was also a longer fight, right? Wasn't it? Or maybe I guess it's the same. I don't think so. It's I like think right it was like the same. eight minutes, maybe. Yeah. Well, if you look at, I'm looking at our echo like curve right now, and we got to face like deep into phase three multiple times, and we just wipe, and that happened for the last seven. Yeah, because well, you, so you like... have people that can't learn the weak aura. It's like just that is just frustrating. Like it's one thing dying to a mechanic, and you're like, all right, bro, like you know, you got to fix this. And then it's another thing like dying to like a weak aura. And the the thing with the weak aura on echo, it's like the map in the last phase. If the freaking boss is off like two pixels and the map just changes, it's like, come yep. on, like what are we doing here, you know? Yeah, so much dumb stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would prefer Tindril every time, but I do think they just needed to maybe maybe evaluate more like how, how hard that would be for normal guilds and the nerf needed to come a lot sooner. Yeah, I wonder I what our opinion on it would be if we like just if we didn't spend like the first three hundred pulls um like fighting at pre nerf. Mm -hmm. if it was just like we only progged at post nerf how it would be oh it'd be, i'm sure it'd be people would have a much more positive outlook on it but yeah you can't you can't, can't take away the fact that we did after prog it when it was absolute uh, yeah now some people were saying like we should or they they would have like rather extend or not i'm sorry like re-clear in, instead of extending on tendril because we extended on him for like the last uh i think one two three four four weeks i guess what are your uh -huh. like thoughts on that? Like, do you think it was fine extending, or should we have just re-cleared until they nerf? Like, we knew the nerfs were coming, right? So, what do you think? Oh, I 100% think that it was the correct play to extend. Still, yeah. you you can never you know don't know for sure when the nerfs are coming, yep. and how we did the fight initially still that translated directly into doing it post nerf. It's not like the fight changed a ton. It just act like just took out a mechanic and made it way easier. So, yeah. I absolutely think that like there's no way. You could convince me that we shouldn't have been doing that like it was definitely the play to extend because yeah it, we killed it so quickly after nurse because we were so, you're so used you're to, doing so used it, to you know? it yeah but yeah, yeah and and not, like we said earlier we had to phase three like 10 times and then killed it pretty much because we would have been getting i don't know you reclear and we and mind you you're still reclearing smolder on too which i don't know how like smoothly we would have done that and so we'd probably get like best case scenario one day of prog on yeah, the boss it, week and it's like yeah. definitely a boss where you need like pull as much as possible okay gotta get through laridar before smolder on that's for sure <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah the, i agree i think true, i think but... extending was the the play as well it's like you don't even need gear uh, i know people just don't want to like bash their heads in against the boss like because they know nerfs are coming but like you said you, you just don't know when they're coming if they're actually coming at all but yeah yeah and all, that's just also i mean if you're not a super 
good guild with very very good players who are doing a lot of stuff outside already to be prepared and stuff the the best way to progress is just pulling as much as possible like the the, boss, people have yeah. to see things to actually get used to them and so and that's always been our thing we've always extended pretty early because you know you're a two-day six-hour guild you don't have a ton of time and you kind of need to jump on it. and i think people extended earlier than us i think there was a lot of people who like extended once they got the smolder on some two-day guilds yeah you know, i mean for a pure rank perspective we definitely would be a lot further along if we extended and i don't even know if we got serious upgrades from that week that we didn't and we re-cleared yeah so it's like i don't know it's it's up in the air for me whether or not that is uh, we'd probably be like a week and a half ahead if we had uh extended on smolder on but yep. then again it's another week and a half we were we'd be progging on you know pre-nerf tendril kind of yep so it's like uh i guess we took the lesser of two evils <laughs> i don't know yeah i mean it, it is it's definitely difficult to say but yeah. I, I, I mean I, if, I, I yeah if uh yeah if tendril was like easier it definitely extend earlier but yeah i mean i think once you actually get to him just just extend anyway yep 100 percent. and then going so now we're going into fire Act. um and i think i think fire Act looks pretty cool as a boss what, what do you think hang on before that what uh what were we phasing this guy at end of phase three like 45 right 40, 45, 45 to 47, 47. Yeah. so we had one two three four we only had 26 pulls in phase three that like we actually live past the uh whatever that mechanic's called that wipes you if you don't break the shield and then we only had uh four pulls below 20 percent, pretty much and then we just killed them that's just i don't know yeah that's it, funny to me yeah I, I think like p3 just got very very simplified by all the changes they made it took like a lot of the difficulty yeah. out of that phase a significant amount of difficulty the c even the first c change they did where they just increased the time you got to get to them mm -hmm. was massive for that because I, i'm pretty sure that was extreme like that was a huge difficulty mark in phase three is those sets where the beams happen as a seed spawn like people had to be right oh, there like, you, you would i can't imagine doing people. that and like accidentally yeah. running or like the one where you run over someone's you wipe the raid yep. like that's <laughs> that just seems impossible and i i think uh pre like in race roll first, they had three second seeds there, and then they nerfed the five seconds. Uh, it's just insane to me. I don't know. Um. Anyway, back to Fire Act. Uh, I think. I I think it looks, it looks good. The weak aura stuff is very, kind of, lame. I don't really like it. Mm -hmm. I know it's gonna like be a pain to set up. Um. Uh, Phase one's okay. It's a little boring, I guess. Phase two, I, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I think phase three might just make up for the fight for me. But like phase two, I'm really not a fan of CCing ads in like uh, in a raid boss fight. I, I don't know why. It's just like I hate I hate having to kick ads like a lot of ads and CC a lot of ads. I just feel like it's our guild's really bad at like group control and stuff. Um, like thinking mm -hmm. back to like Soul Render. <laughs> like i swear yeah. the griffs were just like never on point there um phase three looks like freaking crazy balls to the walls though that looks like really fun but i just don't know if that makes up for like uh kind of boring phase one a, a shitty weak or intermission and like a annoying ad healing ad and dps ad phase two yeah and it's another the whole engineering tech of having those knockback things and stuff like yeah. that that's that's clearly where you're getting into should this even be a thing that people have to do zone and again like blizzard that's something i don't know if it's reducing the amount of ads that spawn to make it more manageable Probably. or the grouping or something but yeah it's just another one of those things where it's like no we're not going to be able to have everyone in our guild to go get the engineering thing required to have a knock and that just like that kind of stuff is just so annoying and, and like yeah. and it's not even just that you have to like autumn the dk so they get the back in time and, and you want people all to be, that stuff and you want people to be good. dwarves like to spell easier yeah. and you want like your misweaver to be an undead to freaking eat the stupid tree to get his mana back it's like what are we doing <laughs> and it's yeah, like it's, it's like much. it's like not mandatory mandatory but it's like you know you're not gonna tell the people all right you guys have to play dwarf and mister you have to play undead but you know if you're like getting cutting edge and a cutting edge guild at like the rank we're going people are just gonna like do that you know 
Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't, nope. you shouldn't have to, honestly. No, anything like that where it requires you to rely on a racial or profession or something. I mean, it's cool tech and all. And like, honestly, yeah. the Razageth boots, that was just that. like fun flavor. Yeah, that, that was, that was cool. fun to do. But that was not the, necessary at all, though. No, no, yeah. it just like maybe maybe if you were really like pushing really early and you were only like four fifteen and sixteen item level oh, like yeah. a lot of the top like 50 guilds were yeah that like that adds up but yeah by the time we got there it was really just for fun it was just like a fun thing to do and yeah it helps break the shield quicker but not a big deal at all and so it, those kinds of things though when it becomes required or just like makes the mechanic significantly easier that is something that shouldn't really ever happen or yeah. if they're going to do that it's just one of those things like it needs to be nerfed or the mechanic needs to be altered a bit so people guilds like ours aren't dealing with that and same thing with the dispels yeah like it, the fight shouldn't get so much easier if everyone's able to pay the 30 bucks the blizzard to go faction or race change so you can dispel yourself like that stuff's just silly yeah it just it just puts a sour taste in people's mouths too like i've had like three people dm me asking him like if we have to go door for this fight i'm like i'm not making you a door if it just really like reduces the difficulty of the like You'll you will survive more if you go dwarf pretty much. Yep. Yeah. But no, I mean I'm not gonna force it, but you know, you do you, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean I guess that's something we can getting more into Fire Egg, obviously, as we're actually starting to progress it, we can talk more about it. Um But yeah, I think just up until this point, the tendril was a good fight, but just a lot of things I think could have been better. And I hope moving forward they're more aware of that. And they don't. And I also don't get like the world first guilds don't want them to tune for world first or try to make fights so hard. Like ever, even those guilds want the race to be like in in one reset or shortly after the first reset. Um, and I think one reset, like having the raid die in the first reset, is better for people watching too because if it's close, then you have to deal with all like the the silliness of like the reset and stuff and who gets it first. So I just don't get why they even try to tune raid tiers for if people are like that and they're willing to put they have full analyst teams and people like just a huge staff backing it and they're braiding for 16 hours a day like just let them do that and don't try to tune for them because the, they don't want you to no one no normal mythic raider wants you to do that either it's just something it doesn't even really make the race more fun to watch like it just gets prolonged and you kind of start losing interest because 80 yeah. percent of the race is like splits and watching them wipe really early on hard boss fights and stuff so like people just care about seeing the cool kills not watching them slam their heads against a wall for I mean, hundreds and hundreds of pulls. I don't, I didn't, speaking, like, speaking of that, like, I guess Avarice is, like, a really just perfect example of that kind of, like, yeah. they kind of went in, they did it in, like, a one reset, they just, like, shit on all the bosses, Sarkarath, and it kind of reminds me of Nathria, minus, like, Stone Legion Generals, like, they just kind of went in, did their thing, but then, like, for a guild like us, like, it was still a difficult tier. Yeah. Um And I don't think it's, I don't think it's an issue making bosses, like, super hard. It's just, like, they just need to nerf them earlier, but the problem with that is, like, they don't know when to nerf them. They're like, uh, uh, if we nerf them now, it's, like, unfair to these guilds. If we nerf them now, it's unfair to these guilds. And it's, like, how far do you go before you're, like, all right, we, we like, need to nerf these. Yeah, yeah, and I'd much prefer them to, like, take a better look at how quickly you can acquire gear. And obviously, there's nothing you can ever do about split runs and how how much they game the system to get as much gear as quickly as possible. But you seem to make the fights hard, even for them, for the right reasons. Like, make tuning more aggressive so it actually is almost, like, mathematically impossible if you really want it to be harder, like, for them to do it on a certain gear level or something. Like, you can just make... You can tune actual damage harder, not just yeah. add really bloated mechanics that... That's true. Obviously, they're going to figure out because they're doing bosses for 16 hours a day and they're all the best, you know, players that you like can get. And I feel like that's how it used to be. Uh, like, I don't know when um a change to like all these like weak auras and shit and just like the mechanics are what's super difficult about the fight not like the actual damage but i remember even like back in um like bfa that was like you know it was just like a, a numbers thing um which i guess is mm -hmm. kind of like lame to the viewer if you're just like oh they're stuck on the last boss they just like actually can't mathematically kill it this reset and they're just like slamming poles into it waiting well, for like a nerf or waiting for the reset but i don't know well that and that's what i mean like they're they always like uh well the uh sanctum sanctum domination was another great example where it died in the first reset but it they just had to they will always figure out how to best optimize their like damage profiles to meet the requirements of the fight so like sylvanas you know when they thought it was 50 percent, their comp was one thing yeah and then they just adjusted the comp to be more yeah, like, like single target more focused out, yeah 
yeah and then they they figured it out so i mean like it could be difficult for that reason it doesn't translate into guilds that aren't you know top 200 like hall of fame guilds just getting really burned out by these super difficult bosses you just because also you naturally the tier gets nerfed as you go because you'll be over geared for the fights and but not honestly even, not these, even these kinds of fights there is yeah there's no gear thing anymore it's just purely yeah. execution and that's fine i mean you shouldn't just be able to actually out gear stuff to the point it's like you know classic where you could just beat the shit out of every boss but it should feel good to get gear and it should make the fight significantly easier and then that's the thing you like even going back to the the fire beam stuff you could have made the fire beams one shot them at their item of like what what are we now they would have been like 478 or something yeah. yeah now we're like and by the time we get there and we're all 485 487 or whatever we just have enough stamina to just like barely to live, live it a little bit yeah yeah like stopped, yeah but they just made it a super overkill mechanic where it was it's impossible to live unless you have like rally and your biggest defensive going and then you have a chance of living it like that kind of stuff is just i feel like there's better ways for them to make fights um accessible and again i just don't think they should care about if the tier is kind of a blow over because i don't think anyone after no, avarice was like wow that world first race sucked or that that that's not even something that plays into the calculation of what makes the game fun for 99.5 percent of the player base like there's a lot of people i think are aware of race the world first and will tune in every so often but they do not care and like oh. sepulchre was like by the end of sepulchre no one was even watching it anymore because it was no one wanted Dude, to sit there and watch it white 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 95 percent of people that watch race for first don't even probably fucking mythic raid and if they do yeah. probably even less of them actually get cutting edge like yeah i think every i think people thought Everest was a, a good race like it was done quickly like you said it was like kind of hype liquid you know i mean that's like not at the blizzard but like you know liquid just came in and and did their thing in like six days or whatever and i remember yeah like like jailer like nobody's just <laughs> nobody's watching that 17 days later you know like Nobody, yeah nobody wants to watch no no one's watching the watch fifth it. boss in a row that's 300 plus pulls like yeah. it's not maybe fun one, to watch that maybe stuff. one's cool yeah but yeah the end boss like the end boss can always and always should be the hardest and like it makes sense for those that take longer but again you just can't have it be hard for the wrong, for the wrong reasons. reasons and it's just yeah. makes it just feels so bad as a normal player normal not even normal players like a normal mythic raider which is already such a tiny fraction like they just need to think about that more and i i have never heard any personality in race to world first say that like they want unless they're like uh, maybe trolling or something like playing into it but i have only heard that they enjoy like the quick short race where they're just in and out and then can get it over with it also makes it more sustainable because it's like i'm sure it's very expensive to get everyone who was placed like, oh yeah to have your land party for race to world first and house them all and stuff like it just it just be a win-win for everyone involved in the game if they didn't try to do stuff like they did this year with tendril and fire act i i have i mean i've heard him complain that like i know i've heard like oh magma axe was like too easy for where, where it was in the fight but i mean that's just like one boss you know i mean the end boss is still gonna be hard um but yeah i mean i agree that the and i mean that says it all the time good old ben she's like they just need to make this shit easier so more people like want to actually do it you know and it's a good point like you making it harder and making more like restrictions and requirements for weak ores and stuff it's not going to make people want to actually do it it's going to make less people want to do it so and they need all the yeah, help and that... they can get like for people to play the game end game content is the entirety almost of the meat and potatoes of while WoW. like you have that and the game is so old now that there's really no more sense of wonder for people playing retail and stuff like the exploration factors. You get kind of over it in the first bit of the expansion when you've played through the new content once. Yep. It's like it doesn't it's not really that great. So the real meat and potatoes and replayability of WoW comes from end game progression. And yep. when you make that just extremely inaccessible, especially with how today's like gaming environment is where every game has gone into a seasonal direction where people love like people really like being able to get on whenever they want like have a short burst not too far behind ever because there's like seasons and like you know you can just pick it up and play whenever you want like a lot of ranked games that's I think yeah. a huge appeal is that regardless of your schedule you you always have like if you're playing league or valorant or counter strike anything like you can just jump in and play and go from there and wow's like kind of fighting an uphill battle because it's a, a much more dated gaming model and a lot of people don't want to commit hundreds of hours to be, like even get to the point where they can do what is supposed to be the premier content of the game and wow has seasonality with patches and stuff but like you can't just jump back in and do it and so that's just it just wow. snowballs it piles up if you also are making once you get there to the point you can even do it you're now making it so hard that 
skills are just breaking up before even wanting to attempt it. Like that's just it's just bad for the game. Yeah, it's also like, dude, raiding in like a mythic guild is so hard. You need to find like twenty people with a like mindset playing this stupid video game that are available on the same dates and times as you. That uh, it's just like before even stepping into the the raid and doing the difficult mechanics and all that stuff like just actually setting up a group of 20 people and a guild of 20 people to like all be on the same page is, is hard enough alone and then you're telling me i gotta go in and freaking tell these guys we're wiping on tendril for 700 pulls or un until they yeah. nerf it you know it's like uh yeah they they gotta they gotta figure something out and like you said like the uh the first two tiers of this expansion were, were like that like everything was like linear progression you know um I mean, Echo of Neltharium was hard for the wrong reasons, but it was still like progression in the raid, progression, linear progression in uh, in the vault. Um, mm -hmm. And then this tier, they just like, it was just exponential difficulty. And uh, yeah, like you said, they think they learn from it and then they just go make the same mistake. And I'm sure at the beginning of the next expansion, the first raid will be like super freaking easy again and it will just like be repeating the same cycle but I, I don't know i feel like something something has to change with the the way the fights are designed or like the the way that they make the fights actually difficult yep. for the rest of us yeah i mean my my wish list for the war with him would be like similar to this raid in terms of the first seven and then like eighth boss should be a 150 ish average full count boss and then m boss should be like 200 to 250 i think that should always and, and yeah. i know that's impossible to do as like a designer you can't actually predict how i feel like they how can maxi the world you like oh, the world can, first like, okay yeah. yeah and then everyone's just copying that right they're doing yeah. all the hard the hardest work of like designing a strategy for the fight everyone's just going to adapt to that and when you have that many people looking at it and they're all like so they're veterans of doing this, right? They've mm. they've seen all the different things that can happen in a the fight. They're great at making Mikars, and now they're very good at like sharing them to the general public. So we get a lot of the actual like manpower required just given to us from mm -hmm. like a seeds down from Echo and Liquid, 100%. But Dude, it's actually they, insane they going from like what I remember, um, uh, in Nathria, where, um, at least that's the first time i remember it like you had nothing and then like i remember at some point in athria viseria released like his healing sheet thing his google sheet so now you have like this awesome uh tool to like put all your healing cooldowns in that can like literally translate into your into your ert note and like it just tells your players like when to press their buttons pretty much and then uh you have that throughout shadowlands and now you have like the liquid guys and echo guys releasing like their whole raid week aura packs it's like if we didn't have this stuff, like we didn't back before, like Shadowlands, I want to exactly. say, like holy shit, we're actually never killing these bosses, you know? Yup, it was yeah. the same thing even with like, it, it, yeah, it, and that's the thing. It's just all bad. I think it's just a bad look because now it's not even just because you're not tuning things or you're tuning them better. It's also like the community itself is putting so much effort into like making all these things accessible to everyone, so you can min max a lot easier. You can just play out fights a lot easier with all the weak guards you're at your disposal as a guild. Without those, it would be impossible. Like some of these fights would actually be impossible. Matt, if no one made the Echo of Naltharian map, if BDG didn't make that Never and killing that. share it very early, it, yeah, it just would have been the worst fight of all time, and it wouldn't even have been close. It, it already was a very bad fight, but yeah. like they just can't. I, I don't know. It's just it's just not fun to have to deal with those things. It's, and luckily, we do have the resources that we have that are publicly available to every guild if they choose to use them. But the fact that like everyone is so reliant now on these the the world first guilds and the top ten guilds sharing their resources and like all their weak auras and different tools and stuff like th that that shouldn't even be something that's required. I think they can also just look at something their other form of the game, even like any form of classic or season of discovery and stuff. People, you don't have you don't you could literally clear those raids with the scroll wheel like it doesn't you don't need to <laughs> people be people still play it putting, like, yeah. And, and yeah and wow shouldn't be like retail and mythic rating obviously should be nowhere near that easy but the reason so many people get so invested in like classic and season of discovery and stuff is because of how accessible it is and again i, I do like the barrier to entry and in mythic like it should feel like an achievement to clear the tier each tier and you should have like there should be gratification for doing it quicker and getting a better rank and such and such but that doesn't mean you need bosses like this or to keep yeah. people interested and about i think it just has the the complete reverse effect people don't want to do it because they look at it and they're like we're, we're never going to be able to do this or 
by the time we get to it, like it's gonna be way too hard. We'll be like the end of the tier. It just makes engagement a lot worse, and I think lowers player count. Yeah, like somebody I don't remember who said it. They just said it today. They were like, "Wow, itself is like not a hard game. Like it's easy to be in like you know the one percent of like people, but it's like all the work now you have to do outside. It's outside of like the fight. It's like not about doing the mechanics. It's like about learning." learning everything that comes with the boss instead of just like going in and, and like playing the game it's like it's like the second yeah. job it feels like half the time yeah yep it's just such a big commitment and most of the fights in like vault were still fun to do and weren't overly difficult and i think the same thing in avarice like none of those fights were like extremely difficult they were some of them more annoying than others but <laughs> It was very like I don't even know what Sarkrath was like two hundred something pulls, but that that that's and that's also the thing is if if okay so if it takes Echo or Liquid four hundred pulls to kill a boss, it's going to take. I mean, you saw it, like you like you talked about earlier, like with that Skyline Guild, yeah, like they pulls. were trying to do it yeah. in the first couple of weeks and they they could not do it, and they're a top ten guild. They just like actually could not do the fight yeah. no matter how much they tried. And that should never be a thing. Honestly, I think every guild in like the top 100 should probably clear the raid in the first three to four weeks if it's like a well tuned raid. And I think that happened with Avarice. Like I think yeah. Most guilds oh, dude, everybody. Very I saw some stat earlier. It was like, um, something about what week it was, and this guy's like still on Tendril, and they were like last last tier we we had killed, uh, like Sarkareth around this time in the tier. It was like world like 300 or something, <laughs> and I'm like he yep. still has like tendril to go and fire act to go so he's got like a whole another month on the on the boss but um yeah i mean just for really... me like uh, they should just slam nerfs as soon as the they get world first somebody gets world first you know mm -hmm. or like I, I don't know top i, I understand it is there's more intricacy to it because i do also think the top there like, definitely are yeah. people are like in the top of heart even like uh like yuri the guy we, like yeah he wasn't before their guild was what it is now they he wanted to be able to like progress but there are people there's there are people that really it. yeah really it's just like very limited yeah like people hate it when they nerf fights and uh i know i always hear like like tratno is talking about like how he enjoys like progressing like difficult fights and stuff but you know you're these guys are also in like super good guilds <laughs> so they have like yep. way better players that are able to actually do the stuff uh, opposed to you know someone that's like a lower rank like us where you you know you get to a boss like holandris or tendril pre-nerf you're just never you're just never killing the boss yep and it just shouldn't ever be a thing in my opinion yeah um and i i'm also interested obviously it's a big topic of discussion right now but with like microsoft acquisition of blizzard or activision and the changes there i i do i'm curious about how that will play out in terms of end game content i don't think it'll really change anything i don't or at least that won't be the direct catalyst for it uh i also don't know if like it's hard for me to even say because i can't think of like what games does microsoft even have that they've like been piloting i don't i guess they own like Bethesda or Bethesda. something <laughs> Bethesda, whatever it's called yeah, uh, they own Bethesda. Them? They own like Minecraft, but that's still on like other platforms. I mean, you know, the Halo franchise. Uh, I mean, the, yeah, Beth I think... the Bethesda games are all they're Microsoft exclusive though. Like, but that I mean, Bethesda's gone downhill. Like that Starfield game, fucking sucked. Yeah, and but I do think Microsoft's general approach isn't super intrusive with companies no, like I don't Fire. Either. I think they just, no, they just buy them not. to own them, they're but not. like they don't yeah. like, yeah, they're not super. So, and I know there's like, I don't know, there's an announcement about the new president of Blizzard and, you know, it, it was like the, when, like, I don't know what they, but their role, a high role at Activision though. Before, yeah, they're, now they're, I like, think the they were involved like Call of Duty or something, which that's yeah. not good to me, but. <laughs> I, yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't know how much impact that actually like, trickles down probably to not. how and game content is developed it probably yeah it probably doesn't i don't even think any of the layoffs were people related to like no it was um, nothing for the wow team from like or very very minimal um, yeah from what so I, was seeing. I feel like that won't but i do still think like moving forward so going into war within and especially if they're going to make expansions like shorter and stuff i i think make raid tiers easier and make them happen more consistently because i think legion was really good about that maybe not on the difficulty part like some of the raid tiers were like team of Sargeras 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 way too hard really hard yeah but the rest, I think, were the fights were cool. There were some like like Star Augur and Nighthold was one of those like it was basically Anduin, yeah, uh, easier than Anduin, but same thing where it, the, the people got marked if they touched the wrong person, they blew the raid up. But 
regardless, like the, the consistency of content in Legion was awesome. I think most tiers got cleared pretty quickly. Um, and they were decent at nerfing some of the fight, like tomb the outlier for sure. But I, I would definitely appreciate that a lot more because also people just get, it happens every tier, right? And we've already lost a lot of people. Um, cause we started with a huge roster and now I don't know what it's down to like 24 like or 25, 24, 25, yeah. Something like that, yeah. And, and that plays into it. It's like how long the tier goes on, uh, will directly correlate to player drop off and stuff. It just happens at every yeah, game. It doesn't matter yeah, what they do, yeah. but making them shorter and giving people more reason to play more consistently. I feel like is one, it's fun. I, everyone loves doing new content. That's what makes rating fun. Um, and two, like it, it avoids some of the, I'm stuck on a boss for a month at a time stuff that I'm pretty sure it is very satisfying when you end up killing that boss but if you had to ask people would you rather spend like a week or two months on a boss everyone's obviously going to say a week well yeah that's a that's like a funny thing too it's like um i was thinking about this the other day like we raid two days a week six hours two days six hours a week and i was like thinking i'm like nobody wants to do like a third day but if we did that we would kill fire act like two weeks before if we stayed on a normal schedule but i mean people people just don't want to do do a third day they'd rather just do two more weeks but then like you're on the last two weeks and everyone's like sick of the fight already and it would have been dead if you just did a third day it's just like i don't know it's funny to me it's like people are on yeah. people are on like playing games anyway it's like uh, i yep. don't know you know i know i understand if, like not all 20 can come but it's just funny that like people just don't don't want to do that even though it's a, yeah i don't know that's funny to me well yeah and i guess also since a large a vast majority of our listener base is people in our guild i will say it was kind of irritating how quickly like people were like throwing the flag it like it, i feel like just because the fight's hard doesn't mean you should just like on fire act. i mean say it's gonna, no, yeah and like just be like it's gonna get nerfed why are we even doing this i get like half it's like semi-joking but at the same time you i don't know the tears given to you as it is and there's nothing you can do about it and i think it it would have been cool had they not nerfed it and we killed it. Like that would have been really not the first, the first set of nerfs that had to happen or we were never, ever, ever killing it. But yeah. even like before this week where they made it way less difficult, like that mentality is a bit irritating. I feel like when you're actually in the raid and like doing it and stuff, because people, it like starts like piling on and other people are like, yeah, it's so dumb. And then people just like kind of start, yeah, like one person giving up and playing out. lazy oh, and stuff. Like so stupid, yeah, like, so laggy, like yeah, you, you wipe the lag. group. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then like, yeah, people are just blaming it on like, oh, the fight just sucks. Like it, they should. It's just like I shouldn't even like, be why doing, are we this doing this when they mess up and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's just like it's just kind of annoying. But like you said earlier, if we hadn't done that, you know, us wiping those two hundred times made it allowed us to kill it when we did after the nerves finally came you know if we had yep. just like been re-clearing we would still be on this fight for like two or three more weeks you know um yep yeah what the heck was i about to say dang just lost my train of thought i don't know well yeah and, and all that stuff is just uh, it's, it's the reality of the situation for guilds like ours so you know you, you have to deal with it but yeah it is very it's a bit irritating in the moment and i wish we were just a little bit more just put your head down you need and try that, to kill need that grind and... mentality man yeah just accept the fact that it's a hard fight and it's going to take forever don't just be like oh, i'm just waiting for nerves you go into work your nerves. boss makes you do a hard something hard you're not just sitting there complaining oh man this is too hard i keep my computer keeps lagging i can't open excel you know you just friggin' put your head down and get the shit done you gotta roll with the punches man that's yep. just the only way to go about it and i feel like we could have had more fun if people weren't so apathetic early on in the game early on in the progression i mean like it would have been a lot better but yeah i mean i feel like whatever the, or the up to smolder on like we were like vibes were really good and then like we just hit tender and it's just like nobody wants to do this because like a few people are just complaining the whole time and then it just makes everyone else like not want to do it I don't know. Yep, I agree. And now, I feel like we've said the piece on Tindril. I mean, I could complain about it forever, just like the, the whole situation of it. But um, what? So tuning. I've heard a lot of people saying tuning is a lot better now, and people are happy with it overall. Yeah. Looking at Warcraft logs. I'm, I'm not so happy. Like, why aren't you happy? This legendary doesn't exist, my guy. Yeah, that that is silly. And 
I don't know how they fumbled this, but <laughs> there should actually be no one left who's been killing Pyrex since week one who doesn't have the legendary. They keep buffing ridiculous. my spec, and I'm just like sitting here with a noodle in my hand, like losing out on ten percent of my damage. So like, I want to be powerful, man. Yup, and I, who could blame me for that? I mean, it is just that is stupid. Like you shouldn't just get it because you made a play where and yeah, you did some like I mean, dude, I'm like once. killing the boss on heroic every week. I'm like clearing mythic content. I'm doing yeah, like. I'm filling at least two great bolt slots every week and my for keys. It's like, you know, what, what more do you guys want me to do? Do you want me to just take out my credit card and pay you $200? Cause I will, <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> yeah. That, that is extremely dumb. Cause they, they know, and they buffed it enough to know like how good it is and how impactful yeah. it is for all those plate wearing specs and not having it be accessible. is just like actually so dumb. Um, it, it, I, I swear I've seen, no I one should not have it. If you've killed it every week, I and that should have been true three I, weeks ago. I've seen, I saw more, uh, um, uh, evoker legendaries last year than I've seen which McCollum's this year, and they didn't even have like bad luck production till halfway through last year. Yep, sounds, the, I, sounds I mean, fishy. Yeah. It's just honestly, they if they're, I feel like everyone would prefer if it was a linear system where you could tell when you were gonna get it, yeah. even if you made it like if you want to make it like a shadow more an S quest line or something where like it takes a couple weeks to get done. I'm pretty sure every person would prefer that as opposed to just RNG. Like you never know when it's dropping. You don't actually get to see what the bad luck protection is doing. It's been however many weeks this tier has been out, like eight weeks or something. I don't remember when it came out, nine it's weeks. More than that. Yeah, and people still don't have it. Like that is just, yeah. that is so dumb. And I'm I really glad that I switched now off the <laughs> legendary spec because like that would be so irritating. Nah, you would have gotten it like week one, man. <laughs> Maybe, but like I, I just can't imagine how irritating that is. Well, yeah, I wouldn't even mind if it was like a percent chance, but just show me what percentage I have of getting the damn thing, you know? Like, tell me I have like a 60% chance of getting it. I don't know what percent chance I have. I get these stupid little bad luck protection things. I doubt they even work. Like, I think it's just all yep. like a placebo effect, and I, I'm just, I just don't even think that fucking things work, you know? Yeah, I think legendary acquisition should be more deterministic like it used to be back in the day. Like, I don't know why they moved away from it. It made it a weird token system. Yeah. We just get rid of them. Stuff. Like I, we were sure. fine in the first season without them. We haven't really had them. I kind of. Do you prefer like this legendary system or like the pseudo legendaries, like the the jailer's gavel and the the I think the daggers all Sylvanas were actually legendary, maybe or the bow or something. The bow was right. Well, they they could. I mean, gavel and daggers from Sylvanas clearly drop more often than the chance yeah. of you getting the legendary. So I prefer that because they those actually had the same impact as yeah the legend the legendary, legendary if not yes. more. Like the gavel was insane, using, man. Rogues were using that dagger in their offhand like all of Sepulcher too because it was so good and yeah that. It's just normal loot. It was rare loot, and it was before they implemented like very rare loot. So I don't like, it didn't appear different on the table. I do think it, they had lower drop chances, but still, like that was way that's better than whatever the new legendary system is. Yeah, Even though like, I guess you can say in, in practice they're basically the same because it was personal loot. So you just RNG rolled each week, you killed it. Kind of, but not it, really but because like uh, you can also uh, trade it. Though. You can trade it, and like if you you had like other options, like if you, I mean, if you're killing Mythic Sylvanas, I'm sure you probably had like a rope version of the daggers but like even though you're probably mythic like, you can run heroic with like a bunch of rogues like you said and trade it or whatever and yeah it's just i like i i prefer that system better like they're not really legendaries or pseudo legendaries but uh, the acquisition i, I is also so much easier yep i completely agree and i also wish they would be like i really was hopeful after season four of shadowlands that they would do something obviously you can't have dnrs, DNRs and, yeah. well you could but it, it would make the gearing process very simple which isn't something they want it's just not the model but they didn't really translate any of that stuff like upgrading items from normal to heroic to mythic like all that so i think they should time gate that like the same pace they did the old catalyst like now you get the catalyst right away which is excellent but you should be able to like, like for example there's just a high chance a lot of people well, most are like melee DPS. They're just not going to have a mythic signet brand, for example, by the time we kill fire. Yeah. We're not reclearing and stuff. There should be like a time gated way that you start getting a currency that you can upgrade. You can literally be one thing. Like you can upgrade something from any of the difficulties the tracks, yeah. up. Yeah. Like increase the track of it because especially when everyone extends on end tier bosses, it's just the way it is. Unless you're a very casual mythic rating guild. Like when you get to the very difficult 150 plus pull bosses you're just gonna extend because that's what's most efficient to clear the tier yep. 
but that doesn't and, and no you don't need all your dps having mythic signet brands or spindles or whatever or the legendary to be able to clear the raid tier obviously but that doesn't change how bad it feels that you just don't have those things and now you're not reclearing so you never have a shot at getting yeah. them. like i really wish they would take more from how they're doing these end of expansion seasons where gear is super easy to get and deterministic and like obviously you can't one for one implement it but there should be some translation because people love that people love yeah. being able to get their, and i mean like good it's, items. it's easy to gear up now like you can get to yeah like, you can farm in a weekend to get it like 475 or 480 or whatever but it's like yeah there's trinkets and weapons i i heard i think i heard elsmir say this on like the titan forge podcast he was like uh there should be like a great ball currency like instead of a socket where you, it's like two or three weeks you have to like save up for it and it allows you to like convert a piece of gear from the heroic track to the myth track like it just allows mm -hmm. you to bypass that and i think that's like a great idea like yeah you have all these heroic trinkets but you were clearing and um like last year was super bad you were clearing on boss three like we're never gonna get a mythic uh chromatic essence before we kill sark we're never gonna get a mythic rash ox you know stuff like that um but i think that's like a super good idea some kind of currency where you can upgrade a, a gear track because i don't think this i don't think the gearing is going anywhere how they're doing it now like with the upgrade system and stuff i think people kind of really like how that works yeah i think that's great and i just think they need to add a more deterministic way to upgrade stuff also you have a lot of people who don't even necessarily want to like mythic raid but they still are doing keys and they're just completely locked true, out yeah. of any of the highest item level gear mm -hmm. which i'm not wholly against i do think mythic rating should reward the best gear because i think it's the hardest thing in terms of the commitment and i'm not even getting into like any weird arguments about like what's harder keys or raid Dude, but just the actual so much harder than raid. yeah yeah Come on, man. But, like the commitment of 20 people you know like i so i understand those rewards being the best but also i don't think anyone would be offended if you added a way for people to get one or two pieces of heroic raid gear upgraded to mythic and i think 99 percent of the mythic rating player base would actually like that like no one likes yeah. being limited by extending and stuff and just not being able to get gear you want everyone wants to be able to have the fun toys you want to make your class go you know boom it's like the exact same issue as the legendary it sucks when you don't have it it's really cool when you have it but it's so horrible maybe a bit dramatic but it just feels really bad when you don't have it and it's the same thing with like some pieces of normal gear that happen. like grief torch was a great one where even the difference from heroic to mythic was like a significant dps increase like that thing went crazy oh yeah pick. dude yeah and just and signet just, brand stuff like that you have to get super yeah. lucky to even get it it drops Beacon. off the second to last yeah. boss so like it's just that kind of stuff shouldn't be a thing anymore i think there should be a way to catch up even if you don't get something dropped on mythic the first few times you clear and stuff yeah i agree 100 percent. but i mean to, to give them credit like i think they knocked out of the park like 90 percent of the gearing system they have now I think since last year, it's, I guess it's, I, I think it's maybe a little worse from last year. I don't like how the crafted gear is like lower item level now. So you only really kind of want to crash your, craft your embellishments. But I think for the most part, like the way they have upgrading gear now is like very good. And I hope they continue stuff like this for the future. Yeah, I absolutely do too. Yeah. It's, it's been overall a good expansion for it. And mm -hmm. it's been fun. I think just overall it's been, it has been a good expansion. Dragonflight is definitely better, not, significantly not better to everyone. than Shadow. Well, I mean, yeah. Poor Ben. I think it's it's been a good one. A, do, a very I solid one. The tiers have been fun. Um, the gearing's been great. Like the it, being able to gear alts really quickly is nice too. And they've they've made that better season over season. It's been it's just gotten easier and easier to like catch characters up. And the catalyst change was awesome. So all that I think is steps in the right direction. I just think the, the kind of final piece they can add is um is making it easier to get the highest item level track yeah even if you're not someone who mythic raids a yeah lot. and we'll see and even if they, they want to make yeah. mythic rating requirements like maybe it's a currency that drops and after you kill like 20 or 30 mythic bosses you get enough well that's what the dinars something. were right yeah. yeah yeah you just got tokens and you had to guess x amount and then it turned into something where you could upgrade yeah. to the higher track or higher difficulty i guess and we'll so, see I what they do in faded yeah but well i know they're gonna do dinars again and i'm actually I, I think this faded will be fun. Well, hopefully it's not faded and they don't add a fixes and they just actually just each week you can Dude, do it. That would be raid. you could do any raid you want. The bosses are like way under tune. You're just freaking going in there, plowing these things. That that would be my idea. Of faded. No, like I thought the I thought the Mythic Plus season last faded was super fun. Dude, the raid was just 
just so awful. You got like people that didn't do the first two tiers, and then like you're going in like doing Nathria, and they don't know what the hell they're doing. It's just like, uh, why? <laughs> just make it easy, make it fun, let people blast. Like we said, this just make make shit easy, and people will play the game. You know? Yeah, I yes, and I think being able to eventually you could do any of the three raids. I'm pretty sure at the yeah, end of it, it was but at the end. It, but we weren't even yeah, raiding it, at that point anymore. You, yeah, you're so right. There's some of those like Nathria fights that a lot of people in our guild just had never done, so it was really rough and then to like, like situated. You gotta get the, the weak fixes came out at super awkward time. Fixes. Yeah, yeah. It, it'd just be easier if yeah, they should just kind of tune it down so it's not really that hard. And I don't even know if faded actually was that hard, but um, that was for us. I, I think fixes do not belong in raid in my opinion and i don't they those added actually zero flavor besides if you could like pat on the, the most that was the only yeah. fun thing to do yeah. and a lot of specs just you know don't have it like that you can't do massive uncapped aoe so it was like three specs that were just eating on the modes and everyone else was just like this is stupid so that that was pretty dumb and i hope they don't i really really hope there's no fixes this time yeah i i agree but no the mythic mythic puzzle will be fun but yeah i'm i'm curious to see what they do as far as like dnrs and upgrading stuff go for season four i mean yeah i cannot wait to use a grief torch again i love that oh idea. yeah it's man my favorite oh, yeah. trinket of all time that'll be cool yeah uh other than that anything else no i think that that wraps it up the tendril woes and everything okay i got a uh, i got some some final trivia slash question for you okay okay all right uh First of all, you have to name me four bosses from Mythic Plus Dungeons this season, and you can only name one boss per dungeon. dungeon. Yep. Um. Hmm. Okay, one sec. No, or what's his name? It's not Ray. <laughs> That's Naru a Ray and... boss, man. No, he is. No, he's a boss. It's the no, first boss. No, he's of not. The... A, he's not the boss. He's I'm, the yeah, pad, he is. isn't he? Oh shoot, you're right. Yeah, man. Witherbark. Yeah. I think that's his name. Yep. That's one from uh, Emerald. Nope. What is it called? Everbloom. Everbloom. Some, yeah, that. Yeah. Um, okay. And then Galakrond from oh. Galakrond's Fall. Okay. Murazon from Murazon's Rise. Oh, come on, man. I, I mean, guess. Just... I guess. And then uh, what's another dungeon? You got a lot. I had to look at the. Oh, I can't. I can't, the names. man. What, what, what's another dungeon? Um um lord ravencrest that's a good one that's a good Black pull from you i would not have been able to do any of that so kudos to you i would have went in and just said like mr and mrs waycrest and like razan that's all i can name i'm so bad with uh dungeon bosses names i don't know why oh yeah i guess i could have done the waycrest too a lot yeah. of crest bosses but yeah yeah th th that one we just did black record so yeah i remember lord ravencrest i can name end. like every raid boss from like legion and all oh, yeah. but i i'm so bad with dungeon boss names i, I don't know why um you have another one yeah well not really trivia this one but question uh who you got who you want to win the super bowl man i don't really care anymore yeah. i'm a detroit fan so that sucked it was a big 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 choke yeah going from like a 17 point lead first half to losing and not scoring it all in the second half until the very end when it didn't matter but that sucked um Oh God, I don't even know. I don't. I'm not, want I'm not a particular that. 49ers fan, so I guess I I lean Kansas City because I one of my yeah. buddies is a big Kansas City fan too. Um, I so I guess them, but again, they've also. I mean, they're kind of the team that's been winning the most the last yeah few years, so it's not really too exciting when they do win. It's kind of just expected, but I guess I'll go. And I think I I bet they will win too. Probably. Yeah, I I have to go Kansas City too. I mean, I'm like sick of seeing this Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift shit. But like I just cannot stand the 49ers, and I I just yeah, I'm not, yeah, a, big Niners not fan. a big Niners fan. So yeah, that's who I'd prefer to win, I guess. Um, other than that, no, that, that's all I got. Any other final shout outs from you, or good to wrap hmm. this up? Shout out to Lenny as always. Shout out to Lenny and shout out to my boy Dink Donk. Thanks for watching, Dink man. Donk. Yeah, thanks guys, and thanks, we'll catch everyone. you all up when we're deeper into Fire Act. We'll talk about all the fun of that. Hopefully they nerf it and we kill it in like three weeks. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. Good night.